Hello, everybody. Welcome to Catalyst Week. Uh, my name is Philip Gilpin, Jr., and I am the Executive Director here at the Catalyst Story Institute in Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it's going to be a fun week ahead, and it's going to be so great just to see everybody again. Um, you're joining us today from everywhere around the world. Uh, we have creators that are coming in from all around uh, the Minnesota region, the US, and as far away as places like South Korea and Africa. Uh, so it's going to be a, a really incredible week. And I just want to say thank you to all of our partners uh, uh, here locally and industry-wide uh, that have helped make this happen. And it's uh, it's been too long. I can't believe it's been two years already since we saw all of you and we were all together here in Duluth sharing stories and hanging out and making new connections and chatting with friends. So I'm uh, really looking forward to it. Um, so I just want to jump right in and we'll get started here. Uh, if you're watching live on YouTube or Facebook, go ahead and put some comments or questions uh, down in the comment section here. Um, and I will try to get to as many of those questions uh, throughout the hour as possible. Uh, so let's kick it off with some basics. Uh, for those of you who have been with us for years, either when we were ITV Fest or you're just brand new uh, here to the Catalyst family, um, let's talk a little bit first about exactly what the purpose of this week ahead is. Uh, so Catalyst operates as a year-round story institute. And what that means is we focus on series, episodic, and narrative content. Uh, we don't do anything with film. We are not a film festival. We don't show films. We don't work or develop with films. Uh, we focus exclusively on basically everything else, anything that's uh, narrative, scripted, podcast, drama, comedy, unscripted, reality, AR, VR, kids, animation, uh, talk shows, whatever you can think of that is in an episodic or a narrative format. Uh, and what that means is that Catalyst is not a film festival type event where you are watching finished products that are for sale. What you're watching are new show concepts that are relationships and networking with industry professionals, as well as people that are brand new. Uh, we have people in the Catalyst universe who are young. They are, they're as young as high school students and college students that are uh, tremendously talented and, and eager to learn more about the industry all the way up to people that have been in the industry for decades and that you've seen on TV and have won major awards. Uh, and you are probably currently watching some of the, the shows that they that they make. Uh, and so we have this, this full community and our goal is to try to create that pathway for storytellers to develop their work. And what that means in the TV industry is that a lot of the focus goes into development of a series idea. Uh, when you pitch your show idea to a potential financer or producer or partner or network or studio, you're asking them to make a large investment in you and your idea. And so that's a bit different than going to a film festival where you can just say, hey, look, there's my film. Did you like it or not? Do you want to buy it or not? Uh, and that requires a different type of organization, which is why Catalyst is structured the way it is. So year round, we have all of the courses, we have the seminars where we do uh, one on ones like these, and we help fill in the knowledge gaps that creators and producers and people on the indie side of the industry may have so that the TV development process is a little more accessible and understandable. Uh, and because if you come into the, the TV side of the industry just totally blind, it can seem like this massive beast that there's in this wall that there's just no way through. Uh, and that's what we're here to we're here to help with. Um, so that's a little bit of an overview about the purpose of Catalyst. And that leads into the, the next comment, which is about the festival event itself. Uh, for a lot of people, they know us just as the festival event, but the year-round institute piece has really come into play in the last couple of years, especially during COVID, where we moved a lot of our work virtually. Uh, and what that means is we've been working with a lot of the content creators that you're going to see at the festival this week. We've been working with them for months on developing their storylines, their pitch decks, helping them fill in the knowledge gaps about legal and finance and helping people learn a little bit more about networking in the industry. And what, what is a writer's room and how does that work? What happens if I actually sell my show? Do, do I just get a check from Netflix and my show ends up on air Friday night? Uh, the answer is no, uh, there's a process involved. But um, what exactly does that, does that mean? And that has really helped us develop a community of content creators that are coming in to the festival week, not just prepared with their shows, but with the knowledge 
to understand the types of conversations uh, that they should be having and the types of people they should be meeting. Um, the entire purpose of being here in Duluth and having the, the festival and the organization uh, where it is, is so that it has a small town atmosphere. It's the reason we're not in LA or New York or Chicago or, the, or Atlanta. Uh, it's a retreat getaway. And one of the main icebreakers that Catalyst provides is when you go to an industry event in one of the major cities, uh, you can just approach people randomly and, and kind of be like, hey, who are you? What do you do? Uh, do you want to talk about my project? Um, and it can seem a bit um, off-putting at times, or it could just not work for you. Um, one of the things that's special about Catalyst is because we're in this uh, remote getaway setting here in Duluth, is that that's the icebreaker. If you show up, if you are here, everybody at Catalyst is talking to everybody else because you've all made it here. And so you've already had the ice broken and you can start just picking up conversations with people that have been on panels or people that are sitting next to you at the bar. Um, and we see it every year. So that's what's, uh, that's what's special about Duluth. And I'll get into the venues and a, a map around town a little bit later on. Um, but the first thing, let's get into some logistics about the festival week itself. So now that we've set the stage about what Catalyst is and, and why we're here in this location, um, let's talk about what happens when you arrive. So the very first thing to know about Duluth, and I'm going to try to share my screen here, so bear with me, um, is that it's a, it's a pretty small town. Uh, it's a community of about 86,000 people, which means it's not a very long ride from the airport to the downtown theater district. Uh, it's about 15 minutes from the time you land, get in the car, and head downtown. Uh, there's Uber, there's taxis, there's Lyft, uh, and also we do have some first-come, first-served shuttles. Uh, if you are downstairs at the terminal grabbing your luggage and the shuttle uh, fills up, don't worry, it'll be back in about 20 or 30 minutes because it only takes 15 minutes to get downtown. Uh, so that's one of the things that we, that we really love about having the festival here is that it's all very accessible and very easy to get around. Uh, in terms of weather for the week, it is looking really good. Uh, it's about 75 and sunny out here today, and it looks to be that way throughout the week. Uh, so feel free to uh, bring some summer clothes, but at night it's getting down into the 40s or 50s. You're going to want to bring those winter jackets, especially as the parties let out at night and after the screenings and social events. Uh, and we'll get into the schedule in a bit. So you fly into Duluth, you land, you get to your hotel, you get settled in. The next thing that you're going to want to do is head over to the box office uh, and pick up your badges. If you have bought a single day pass or a uh, multi-day general public pass, those are the $20 and $55 passes. Um, you'll be picking those up at the Zeitgeist box office that is located at 222 East Superior Street here in Duluth. Uh, that'll be open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday this week. If you have a creator or executive badge, you're gonna pick those up directly across the street at the Blackwater Lounge, which is located at 231 East Superior Street. Uh, and remember that this year with our COVID protocols, you will be required to show a photo ID as well as proof of vaccination to pick up your badges. Uh, and that means that no, you cannot pick up uh, a friend's ticket and you can't pick up friend's badges. Every person has to show their individual ID and their individual proof of vaccination. Uh, you don't have to bring your physical vaccination card, digital copies are okay. Um, but if you have a group of people that are joining you and you purchase tickets for for you and ten friends, each of those people is gonna uh, each of those people are gonna have to come through uh, and pick up their own passes. So that's something that's a little bit different this year. Um, all right, so now you've picked up your passes and you got your festival program and it's off to the schedule. So let's talk a little bit um, about the schedule because at first glance it can seem a little overwhelming for people uh, if it's your first time. So I just want to walk through it. Uh, it's right here on the, the Catalyst website. This is the most up-to-date schedule. This is the first thing we update uh, if there are any changes. At this point, the festival schedule is pretty locked. We aren't anticipating any major, any, any major changes. Uh, as long as everybody's flights make it in and all the speakers arrive, we'll, we'll be good to go. Um, the full fe festival program is also here if you want to download that and read through the show descriptions. Uh, but starting on Wednesday, the screening venues are going to open around 11.30 to noon. Uh, Zeitgeist, uh, is also the box office, uh, has three of the main venues, Zeitgeist Theater 1, Zeitgeist Theater 2, and then Zeitgeist Teatro. The Teatro is going to be used for our workshop series throughout the week, and we'll talk a bit about more uh, about those a little bit. 
Uh, and then spirit, it refers to spirit of the North theater inside Fickers. Uh, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the schedule page here, uh, and there's a lot on the page, so uh, you'll see the venue list with all the addresses and everything. So Fickers, Spirit of the North, that's up on the third floor inside the Fickers complex, uh, the Teatro, like I mentioned, and Zeitgeist. And then you have the Kichigami Club, which is a little on down the road, and that's where we'll be hosting uh, all of our panels. So from Zeitgeist to the Kichigami Club, the Catalyst Campus takes about 10 minutes to walk. Everything's really close to uh, close together. Uh, there's a lot of restaurants and shops along the way, so it's a fun part of town to hang out. And you'll notice this big blue ocean over here. This is actually the edge of Lake Superior, uh, which if you've never seen it before, it's mind blowing. Uh, Lake Superior is actually the size of all of New England minus like half of Maine. Or the other, my other favorite comparison is Lake Superior is the size of the entire South Island of the country of New Zealand. It's incredible. Um, so when you get here, you actually feel like you are in an oceanside community, even though you're in the middle of the continent. Uh, from a producer standpoint, that's one of the main reasons that we moved Catalyst here is that if you have a script or a show that requires both water locations and forest and downtown city and suburban locations, you have all of that in Duluth without having to do a company move from you know Santa Monica to, to East LA. You can just turn your camera around and you've got the ocean and the forest and, and downtown and everything. So uh, from a production standpoint, it's great. Um, so that's a little bit about, uh, about getting around town. Um, and then the next thing is going to be uh, the networking lounge. So after you arrive and you're and you're roaming around the schedule uh, and you're seeing all the venues and everything, the next thing you want to do is kind of just hang out. Uh, the point of Catalyst is networking. And when it comes to how to do that, uh, we've been holding an online series. Uh, check your emails if you uh, haven't seen those. That's, we've realized that some people, especially that Gmail, but our Catalyst emails tend to go to their promotions folder sometimes. Um, so keep an eye out for, for all of those. Um, but as it as the week progresses, um, the thing that you want to uh, you know try to do more of is just meet everybody. Uh, one of the most difficult parts of the television industry is how do I even start? Who do I talk to? Who are the right people to talk to? Um, do I have to move to LA? Do I have to spend ten years in New York just going to random events and classes and and going out to bars and stuff? Or is there a way that I can uh, kind of fast track? the networking process. Well, that's exactly what Catalyst is, is meant to be here to help with. Um, it happens every year where people are sitting at the restaurant, sitting at the bar, hanging out in the lounge, and they start just talking with somebody uh, who's sitting next to them. And they have no idea who that person is. Uh, and it just turns out that it's the, you know, such and so and so from such and such that ends up uh, working with you on your project years down the road. Uh, we find that it typically takes anywhere from two to five years after people meet at Catalyst until we get the call or the email back saying, hey, that person I met at Catalyst three years ago uh, just hired me to be a staff writer in the writer room uh, on this new network show. Or, hey, we're going off and shooting our own indie production now because this finance person I met uh, is going to finance our project. Uh, just as a, a really cool example of that, uh, back in 2017, we partnered with my uh, my alma mater, Boston College, and had a, a group of college students that came up to Catalyst. Uh, one of those students ended up meeting a gentleman who works at a finance firm, uh, graduated, uh, got, student graduated college, and went on to work at the firm in LA. About three or four weeks ago, I got a call from a producer friend in New York. And he says, hey, uh, I think we've found somebody who's interested in helping finance part of our project do you know this person? And it turns out the person was the intern from 2017. Uh, and I said to my producer friend, I said, you know, you've met, you were standing next to each other at the festival uh, four years ago. Uh, but sometimes people won't pay attention to the college intern student because they're trying to find the exec from Netflix, right? Uh, and that's not really the way our industry works. Because remember, you're not selling your show, you're selling you. You're starting to build relationships with people to go through the, the television development process. So keep that in mind um, as, you're, as you're going forward and hanging out at Catalyst. Uh, it's not that you can run around and meet everybody, but you can definitely start forming some great relationships with a few folks.
uh, and those will be your, your doorways to the next steps of what you're looking to do. Um, all right, screenings and table read details. So the screenings run basically uh, noon to six every day uh, with uh, a couple of exceptions. And the table reads are gonna be happening uh, over at the Kichigami Club. Um, so let me go back to our schedule page here. Uh, give it a quick minute to load. Uh, so Wednesday, you've got screenings happening at Zeitgeist 1 and 2 and Spirit of the North. Uh, the Script to Screen workshop series, which is really incredible. This is a pretty intensive two-day workshop. You'll see it over here on Thursday as well. Um, this is where you're going to get the chance to really go through the whole process of how a TV show makes it out of your brain, onto the page, through the development process, uh, through the business process, and then into distribution. Uh, and that is going to be an uh, environment where Tatro holds about 120 to 130 people at the most. Uh, so it's pretty small, it's pretty intimate, and you're going to get the chance to hang out with a lot of showrunners, producers, directors, writers, financers, uh, network execs, and others uh, to really talk through the process. And then as part of that, they'll be picking random folks from the audience to come up and just uh, do some practice pitching as well. So you'll get to present your idea if you want. Um, uh, so on Thursday, the screenings continue at Zeitgeist and Spirit. And then we start with the panel discussions over at the Kitschy Gammy Club. Uh, and then the table reads, these are the table reads being hosted by SAG AFTRA and the Screenwriters Workshop and the Minnesota Women Film and TV here. Uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, you can roam in and out of the, the table read room as you please, uh, and just kind of listen to all the new, the new scripts that have been uh, chosen for the, the script final. Uh, and then the cocktail lounge is where we have all of the social receptions throughout the day. This Rizzle one on Thursday night is going to be particularly interesting. Rizzle is a company that's focused on high quality episodic content that's shot entirely vertically, uh, not horizontal converted to vertical, but actual vertical storytelling. And so you'll want to check that out. Uh, they'll be doing a workshop about virtual storytelling to start. And then there'll be a social afterwards where you'll get to hang out uh, and meet some other festival attendees. On Friday, you've got more screenings. Uh, the SAG After workshop starts in the morning. Uh, the local SAG After chapter is going to be doing a really good intensive two-day workshop program for actors uh, to help you up your game as they're, as they've titled it, uh, and help figure out kind of what the next steps are, uh, for your acting career. And then in the afternoon at the Teatro, you have pitch world. So we have lined up a series of 15 minute pitches. Most of these come out of our Institute program. Uh, they're pretty fun. It's crazy, a variety of ideas, and it's wonderful to see all the types of stories and shows people are, are dreaming up these days. So if you want to just grab some popcorn and hang out in the Teatro and see some live pitches, uh, that's going to be that's going to be a really good time. Uh, throughout the Friday and Saturday afternoons at the Kichigami Club, the panels and the table reads will continue. Uh, one uh, particular panel to note is NADIS, which is the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, also known as the Daytime Emmys. Uh, we are going to be having a very special announcement with them uh, Friday afternoon. So you're going to want to be there for that. And then right after that is the Korean Showcase. One of the Catalyst's main partners this year is the Korea Foundation out of Seoul. And that came about as part of our International Institute expansion. Uh, and they're going to be showcasing some really cool uh, content that's been coming out of South Korea. So uh, a couple of things to note there. And then on Saturday, you've got the workshop uh, with Kelly Edwards called Get Staffed. Uh, she's a staff writer on the Fox show, um, Our Kind of People, and is a former uh, HBO talent executive. Uh, so she'll be filling, uh, filling you in on the details about the process of how the networks work and how talent can, uh, can work its way through, can, you can work your way through the process. Uh, so those are just a couple highlights. Uh, Friday night, our social event is the Minnesota Women Film and TV Cocktail Social at the Kitchigami Club. And then Saturday night, uh, is our awards gala and content creator celebration. Uh, so we encourage you to join for as many of those as you can. Um, moving on to the, the community of Duluth itself. Um, you have a lot of places to eat in Duluth. Uh, there's some really great food here. I live here. I've been living out here for three years now. Uh, and I still haven't been able to explore every restaurant yet especially in the downtown district and Canal Park, which is down by the waterfront. 
Um, I'm just realizing that I think I messed up the screen share earlier and that the maps of the waterfront didn't come up. So I'm going to pull that back up again just to kind of give you an idea. Um, so this dot here on the left, this is Zeitgeist, and that's where the check-in lounge and the box office and everything in the theaters. And then up here at the Kitchy Gaming Club uh, is where all the panels and social events and table reads are happening. Uh, the Fickers Complex is right here in the middle. So this is this 10 minute stretch of Superior Street. This is our Catalyst campus. Uh, and this is the big blue lake that I was mentioning, uh, mentioning earlier. Um, but this section down here is called Canal Park. And this is where all, a lot of the restaurants and shops are. There are a bunch up here as well. You'll see Vabene is a great Italian restaurant. Uh, there's a brew house inside Fickers. You got the Bow Club. If you're into Bloody Mary's and brunch and really good breakfast, as well as steak at night, go to the boat club. Uh, it, the thing they do with Bloody Marys is unique. I've never seen anything like in the world. They've got lobster that comes out of the glass. It's amazing. Um, and then down here in Canal Park, you've got the beautiful Lake Walk and all of the, the shops and everything. Um, if you happen to be staying at the Radisson, it's right here downtown. So it's about a 10 minute walk from the Radisson to Zeitgeist and that'll get you on campus. Uh, and again, the weather looks really, really good. So, um, I don't think you have to worry too much about uh, about rain and all that. Uh, so that is a, a bit of a look uh, around town for you. Um, one of the fun things that we've introduced this year is Catalyst Bingo. Check it out in the program when you get it. It's just a, a fun to-do list of all the things uh, around town. And for those who uh, take pictures of themselves doing these things around town, uh, our social media team is going to be picking out kind of their favorite photo and giving out a fun little door prize uh, at the awards gala on Saturday night. Uh, so it's just a, a fun little way to explore Duluth. And, and while you're exploring Duluth, put your producer hat on and put your writer's hat on and start looking at locations. Uh, like I mentioned, you see the lake for the ocean and you'll see, you know, the forest areas and everything. But even all the, the buildings and architecture in downtown Duluth, it's a wild variety. I remember when I first came into town, one of the first thoughts I had was, oh my God, Duluth is a backlot. It's just a big production backlot waiting to be shot. Um, you can do car commercials down the main street. You've got old buildings, new buildings. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, so make sure that you get out and around and, and, uh, and explore the town. Um, one last note uh, for the content creators who are uh, in the comp any of the competitions. Um, the thing about awards and judging is that it happens before the festival. Um, I don't know if many content creators know that. Uh, the screenings that you have, the live table reads that you do, the, the Q&As that you do, all the things you do at the festival have absolutely no impact on the awards judging. So if your screening freezes or, or the color's off or the sound isn't working, obviously that's annoying and we want everybody to screen properly because you put so much work into making your show, but you don't have to sweat it that it's somehow impacting uh, any type of awards. Um, same thing with the table reads. If you know the table read just uh, some actor starts going off book and start making stuff up or whatever, it's, it's all good. Uh, all the results are pretty much already almost in. I think we get the last couple of results in Wednesday. Um, the festival itself is just meant to be a, a fun, relaxing environment for everybody to, uh, to hang out in. Um, so that's the, that's the quick Catalyst uh, overview and update for the week. Um, so the last thing I, I want to do is I want to get into a uh, content preview. Let's get to the heart of why we are all here, which is the stories and shows at the festival itself. Uh, this is a really fun page. Um, I've been going through it over the last couple of weeks again. A lot of these shows submitted uh, last year, some of them submitted this year. So it's been a great refresher course on seeing all the shows again and, and what everybody is making out there. Um, you've got trailers for most of the shows. There are 77 new shows. Uh, we had over 800 projects submitted to us from over 20 countries. Um, and just a quick note about festival selection. I know that we all come out of the film festival world model where all that matters is whether or not you get selected. And if you get selected, it feels like you've won and your show is validated. And if you don't get selected, it feels like, oh my God, I, you know, why, why wasn't my show selected or whatever. In the TV side, in the series side of the industry, that's really not as important. 
Uh, because if you go back to the thing I talked about at the beginning, the heart of the industry and the heart of the thing that you're selling isn't necessarily your content idea. It's you and it's the networking and it's the relationships that you make. Um, yes, we only have a limited amount of screen time at the festival every year. So we have to make selections. Otherwise, we'd have 30 screens running uh, with 800 shows. Um, but if you have a series idea that wasn't selected or maybe you didn't submit it, um, you're still welcome to attend and meet everybody and talk about it. In fact, we have had some of our most successful direct show ideas be sold from people who attended the festival and didn't even have a show in the festival, uh, but they met somebody and pitched them the idea and they went on to work with them uh, on it afterwards. Uh, so it's really not all about selection, not even though selection, uh, selection is fun. Uh, and we have comedies, we've got dramas, we've got animations, there's documentaries, there's realities. Uh, you can kind of just use this as your own little, if you, let me put it this way. If you've spent all of COVID burning through Netflix and there's nothing left on Amazon Prime uh, and Disney Plus, uh, you know, you're wearing thin, you can just come over to this page and start, start browsing through. Um, and then after you get through all of the video trailers, you have the Catalyst script descriptions. So if you are going to be in town and you want to hang out at the table reads, we'll be posting the exact schedule of which one's reading when uh, it should be done this afternoon. Uh, and you can come down and, and listen and, and meet the writers. All of the shows and scripts and podcasts uh, that you see here are attending. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions. We've had a couple of people that have had some COVID issues in the last week or whatnot. So there a couple have fallen off, but for the most part, the people that you see on screen and the writers that you see listed here, you'll be able to meet in person, which is, uh, which is pretty fun. Um, and then after the script section, uh, of which I think there are like 35 or 40, uh, you have all the podcasts. And uh, this is a, a fun new category that we started a few years ago. Really great podcasts out there, but there are very few podcast um, showcases and competitions. So because it's in a narrative episodic format of storytelling, we are happy to take it. Um, so you can listen, click on the image and listen to listen to some of these. Um, so that's what I would encourage you to do over the next couple of days, is kind of preview your, preview your week out. Um, one note about the schedule is that all shows, with rare exception, screen, uh, screen twice. They will all screen once on Wednesday and Thursday, and then they'll all screen again on Friday and Saturday. So if there is a show that you really want to see, but it's on the same time as a panel that you really want to see, take a look for the other screening. Uh, Wednesday, there are no panels during the day. It's a great day to take in as many screenings as you can. Just grab yourself some popcorn and plant yourself in the theater. Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is when you start getting into there's panels and screenings happening concurrently. Um, and then the last uh, point about screenings and schedules and tickets is the virtual pass. If you are joining us virtually this year, you'll be getting details about that tomorrow. We partner with the platform Filmocracy. Uh, so if you've watched other festivals through Filmocracy, it'll be very familiar to you. Uh, you'll get an email from us in the next 24, 36 hours to go on, make your little Filmocracy account. And when you uh, click in, you'll have access to watch all of the content 24 seven, you do not have to follow the in-person content screening schedule. In fact, we do not live stream the content in the theaters. You actually just go and watch the links online whenever you want. Um, and a special note about the virtual pass and the content creator and executive badges, which is basically the, the content creator and executive badges include the virtual access. We are gonna be giving you access to the content beyond the festival week. So if you uh, have a really busy week of work ahead, don't worry about it. You'll have access to those shows all the way through next week as well. Uh, the only part of the festival that we are live streaming, which you will have to watch only at the time that it is uh, happening on the in-person schedule are the panels in the Great Hall uh, at the Kitchy Gammy Club. So you'll have virtual passes is 24 seven content and then live streams of the panels uh, as well as the script to screen workshop. If you buy the pass for that, you'll be able to watch that live. Um, so we're given the virtual thing, a test run this year, uh, seems like it's going to go pretty well, but we're excited that it means we can reach, uh, more people, uh, around the globe and, and help share and, and showcase a lot of the work that the creators have been making. I, one closing thought about the content. It's just amazing to us every year. 
how many awesome storytellers are out there making great shows. Um, and it's like this whole little secret hidden world of independent television that lives somewhere between YouTube and Netflix and HBO. <laughs> and uh, you get to see concepts in their raw beginning format before they get to an agency, before they get into the network development system. You get to see the actual thing that the artist wanted to tell you. You don't get the reproduced, redeveloped version that's gone through seven years of script rewrites at a major network or streamer. Um, so it's pretty fun to, to be able to see the content uh, in, a, in a different format. Um, we accept shows at all budget levels. Uh, we focus more on the lower budget levels. Uh, and you'll still be amazed. Just because somebody's made a 25-minute television show on $15,000 doesn't mean that it's a low quality production anymore. Um, given the advances in technology and distribution, people are making amazing things on small budgets that the quality of which and the writing and acting and the producing and all the talent will easily match a lot of what's on, uh, on network these days. So in a way we almost feel like we kind of have our own little catalyst network of content. And our job is just let the world know that we have this little secret vault of, of content. So uh, if you are joining us virtually, tell your friends and family and have them have them uh, tune in and watch as well. Um, so that's the, the overview that I wanted to give. I'm going to uh, hang out for a few minutes uh, and take any questions. If there's any particulars that I missed, uh, go ahead and throw them down in the comment section and they'll appear in the chat here. Um, and while I am giving you a few moments to do that, uh, I'm going to say hi to some friends. Uh, Rick from Duluth is here. And uh, I see Sammy uh, and Justin. Uh, oh, and Greg Howell. Awesome. Coming in from the, the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. Yeah, actually, uh, Greg, uh, I'm going to be headed out that way soon. Uh, I'm a Meow Wolf fan, and uh, they just opened up in Denver. So I'm looking forward to going out there and seeing that. Um, awesome. Well, I don't see any other comments or questions uh, coming in, but thanks for joining. And uh, we'll see you here in Duluth this week or uh, check us out virtually uh, as well. And if you haven't uh, yet signed up for the Institute, go over to the Catalyst Facebook page, take a look at the Institute sign up. It's a year round process that includes your festival pass. Uh, and oh, wait a minute, Diego has a question. Diego, go ahead, throw your question in there while I keep talking about the Institute. Um, so the Institute will uh, give you access to seminars and meetings and events and, and everything year round uh, so that you can uh, get ready basically for, for the festival uh, next year. Um, all right. So here we go. We have some questions rolling in. Sammy, uh, is there a platform to facilitate conversations online? Great question. So our virtual festival this year is a one-way street. It's just you watching what's happening in the panel room. We aren't doing uh, back and forths with our live audience at the festival itself. But that being said, we do a lot of seminars here on StreamYard almost weekly or bi-weekly throughout the year as part of the Institute process. That is definitely uh, a more interactive environment if you want to uh, be joining us virtually. So I'd encourage you to look uh, at the Institute page and, and uh, see what we've got going there. Um, Justin, uh, hi, Philip. Just curious what you're looking forward to the most this year. Sorry to make you choose. Yeah, I, uh, I get this, uh, question every year and yes, Justin, you're absolutely right. Uh, I love all creators equally. Uh, well, the, the thing about my job is I actually have nothing to do with the judging or the selections. Uh, I, I am running the organization and there are teams of people, uh, who do all of that. So, uh, but myself personally, I, I tend to be more of a drama fan. Uh, and there are some really, really strong dramas uh, that, that were produced this year. Um, so uh, if, you, if you're looking for me and you can't find me, I'm probably sitting in the theater watching some of the, some of the dramas this year. Um, da, 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 da. All right, we've got, I'm arriving after five on Wednesday. Is it too late to get my badge? Can I still attend Wednesday night's opening? Great question. Um, the lounge is going to actually be open till, well, yeah, it'll be open till five. Um, I start my welcome at 6.30. You know what, Megan? I think we may have to extend the uh, Wednesday night lounge hours till 6.30 so that people can pick up their badge to be able to come down to the welcome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for pointing that out, and we'll work with the team on that. So um, 
when are we going to find out about the table reads and actor assignments? Oh, yeah. If you have been part of the script competition, um, check your check your spam mails. Um, the table read assignments and actor assignments have already been completed. They were completed days ago. Uh, but Catherine has mentioned to me that some people haven't been responding and then they're finding that the emails have been buried in their spam box or whatever. Um, if you haven't seen your table read and actor assignments yet, um, send us an email, uh, send it to office here. I'll, I'll put it in the chat, send it to office at catalyststories.com. Um, let us know your name, the name of the show, and we'll be sure to, uh, send that over to you. There, there's a spreadsheet where you went and selected all of your actors, or for, you know, not selected, but um, uh, chose which ones you, you want uh, to see if they were available. Uh, but that has been completed. So make sure you let us know about that. Um, let's ask about the gala. Uh, if any cast members want to attend the awards gala, do they need a creator badge or are separate events? Great question. The answer is yes. Everybody who attends the gala does need a creator badge. Why? Because we spend a lot of extra money putting on a good show. Plus, there's a lot of free food, uh, free foods and drink. <laughs> so uh, it just it just costs a bit more, and everybody uh, needs to pitch in on that one. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and, and grab your badges uh, for that. Um, let me see. I'm going through the list here. Uh, all right, let's see. We, I attended Catalyst in 2018-19 with the series. I'm set up with meetings. Great. I have a script in the festival this year. Is that something you do with script reviews? Oh, right. So meetings. Um, the way that, because we've, since 2018-2019, what's new about Catalyst is that year-round institute that I keep mentioning over and over again. That's where we have the meetings now. The meetings don't happen at the festival event per se. They can, and we'll still facilitate uh, introductions and whatnot. But the institute process year round is where we have all the executive meetings now. The reason we did it that way is we started to realize that content creators were putting way too much pressure on themselves to have to have the perfect network meeting in the four days at the festival in Duluth. Uh, and it was just, it was too much. Um, so we've relaxed the process, we've slowed it down and every institute member now gets to meet with us, gets to meet with our team, and then after you go through the institute process, we start figuring out, okay, who are a couple of potential mentors? Who are a couple of potential industry partners that you should be talking with? Um, so we've taken all of that pressure off the festival event uh, and moved it into the year-round process. So go ahead and check out the institute for that. Um, awesome. I think we've got it all. Um, I don't think I see any new comments coming in. Um, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Diego, I'm worried about my badge because my name is not on the selected projects. I remember. Absolutely. So when the selected projects sent in their information survey, there was a section where people could add uh, other people from their project to the badge list. If your name was in there, you're all set. Um, if your name isn't in there, don't worry about it. We have extra badges at the ready. Uh, and we will figure that out with you when you get to the lounge. We anticipate that people are going to be showing up at the last minute who maybe didn't put their names on the badge list, uh, or sometimes there are just snafus and moving all that data around. Uh, so don't worry about it, Diego. Uh, come on in, show up, and we will definitely uh, make sure that you and Andre are all set. Um, coming in from Mexico, that's right. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, and it's we have another couple of creators that were supposed to come in from Mexico and Brazil. Um, in Nigeria this this year, but I think the, the COVID snafus uh, got them stuck in in transit. So uh, glad to be able, glad to hear you're going to be able to making it uh, making it up um, to Duluth. So, all right. Well, thank you everybody. Uh, can't wait to see you. It feels like I'm talking to a virtual audience that I'm going to actually get to see live in a couple of days. Uh, I just want to say personally, it's been a really uh, tough couple of years not getting to see all of you on a regular basis. It's my favorite part of being in this industry is, is meeting creators and, and hearing the stories. That's why we do so many events in New York and LA throughout the year, as well as in Minnesota. Uh, and I just can't say uh, how excited enough, how excited I am to finally see you all again. It's going to feel like just one big family reunion. We've already had a few creators that started rolling in yesterday and today. Uh, and uh, I've seen some of the, oh, we've got some surprises for you. 
uh, down on Superior Street that I think you're you're really going to love. So uh, thanks again, everybody. And uh, we'll see you here in Duluth soon. Bye-bye.